Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, looking in the Third Testament of the Bible and talking about Elijah. In this class, I'm going to quickly run down through the Third Testament of the Bible, doing a word search for the word Elijah. There are 60 times that the words Elijah is used in the Third Testament of the Bible. We'll just let the Lord guide us and give him all praise and honor for anything that comes out of this video. Alright, so we're going to jump right into it. Now, this is the Third Testament of the Bible, and the first time we see the word Elijah mentioned is down in chapter 2. Um, we're in looking at the contents of this Third Testament, and in chapter 2, there's a whole section called Elijah as the forerunner of the Lord. The next time we see the word Elijah mentioned is down in the contents in section 8 of chapter 9 there's a section called the struggle of Elijah for the true God the struggle of Elijah for the true God so we'll be talking about that so the first time that we actually see the word Elijah in the text is actually in chapter 1 but it's in the footnotes we see that asterisk right there and we see the word Elijah written here. Let me go ahead and read this sentence. It says, The word and revelation of Christ during the second coming is spiritual form. In spiritual form, which began in 1866 in Mexico through the agency of the prophet Elias, who came to prepare the way for the Lord. See also the Elijah introduction. Okay, now this Third Testament of the Bible that I'm looking at, I actually got it from a website over here at Jesus-Comes.com. I downloaded this PDF version, this free PDF version, 592 pages. I downloaded it to my computer and put it in this Word document so I can work with it a little bit better. And that's why the footnotes don't quite line up where they should be on the page. But we'll work to straighten that out at a later date. What this footnote is referring to is this verse up here in chapter 1, verse 20. says, Men fill my presence, shall perceive the universal ray of light that descends and rests upon them. They foresee me without knowledge of this work. This is talking about how a lot of individuals, maybe yourself included, um, are getting divine inspirations these days a lot of times when the people hear about the third testament of the bible a lot of comments people say i already knew that um i i already heard that what what you read in that bible it always reminds me of lyrics that rakim put in a song he said some things that i know will be in your next bible I often want to use that song in some of my videos, but I don't for copyright laws and because all of you guys might not like Rakim. But it's true what he said for a lot of people. Some of the things that these people know are actually turning up in this third testament of the Bible. And that's because the father is giving it to him by divine inspiration directly. Now, there's a lot of important nuggets here in this part of the third testament of the Bible. Is footnotes is actually man's words it's not actually a part of the scriptural text it's kind of something that man added but it's worth mentioning because it refers to the fact of how this third testament of the Bible is in fact the second coming of Christ now that may be a little hard for some of you guys to swallow but you have to remember that the Messiah was the word made flesh he is the word made flesh and when you jump over there in revelations it tells you that he will return as the word his name will be the word of God and so we should be looking for him to come back in the word of God when we're looking for him in the second coming and that's what in fact happened starting back there in 1866 when this Elijah spirit descended on mankind and start giving them divine inspirations using several individuals as human spokesmen and actually wrote out the text that would then be used as the third testament of the Bible. All of that is addressed in the introductory parts of the third testament. You can find out how this book was written. But let's go on. Now down here we're in chapter 2 of the Third Testament of the Bible. 
and the fourth time we see the word Elijah is part way through verse one. It says the spirit of Elijah vibrated through Ro Rogers to remind you the pathway that is the law of the Lord. Now, I told myself I'm not going to get really preachy in this video. I did in the last video I did on Elijah. Where we talked a lot about this law of the Lord and how it plays a key role in the Elijah spirit. Go over and check out that video after you watch this one if you haven't done so already. But in this verse, what I want to talk about is how it says Elijah vibrated through Ro Rogers. Now, Ro Rogers would have been the John the Baptist of the second coming of Christ. Whereas John the Baptist came before the Messiah who walked around as the word in the flesh. This Ro Rogers individual also had the Elijah spirit and he came before the third testament of the Bible. Ro Rogers actually didn't write the third testament of the Bible. He kind of paved the way for those who did. Now this verse is talking about the second coming of Christ. What well, I say again is the Third Testament of the Bible. Now just a point about the Third Testament of the Bible. It is the third part of the trilogy. Moses brought us the First Testament of the Bible about 2,000 years before Christ came to the earth. And then once the Christ came to the earth, we got the Second Testament of the Bible from Moses to Christ was approximately 2,000 years. And then approximately 2,000 years from the Christ and the New Testament of the Bible or the Second Testament of the Bible, we get the Third Testament of the Bible. It's all about the changes in humanity. I don't want to go into this too much in this video, but Moses was the beginning of what's called the Aries era. The Messiah was the beginning of the Piscean era. And now we're entering the Aquarian and this time we are also getting another set of commandments and revelations. Because humanity is going into a new era, a new way of life, we're getting a new set of instructions to go along with that. And that's what you're looking at here, the Third Testament of the Bible, which you can find a link to it in the description of this video. Both that PDF version that we looked at and there's also an audio book that you can get over on YouTube all right the next part of the Bible where Elijah is mentioned it says and as the disciples were trembling on Mount Tabor as they beheld the transfiguration of Jesus while Moses and Elijah appeared in spirit to the right and to the left of the master now we're going to see this again talking about this transfiguration because it was a very important part of the story of the Messiah. How you had Moses and Elijah who stood there with the Messiah there on Mount Tabor. Now Mount Tabor wasn't mentioned in the New Testament of the Bible as the mountain that the transfiguration occurred over there. You can read that over there I think in Matthew chapter 17. But thanks to Mr. Nick Vandelaine, we helped prove that actually it was Mount Tabor that this transfiguration took place. Then there was a lot of important things that happened during that transfiguration. One of the things you, you see these three individuals lined up, um, Moses, Jesus and Elijah. That's extremely important when you put those three together because that is how we get our salvation. That's the way our Father in Heaven lined it up. And you may not have heard this information from anybody else before, but you have to remember that there's a lot of suppression going on with the Father's Word. There's a lot of books out there that people don't want you to know about. The Third Testament is one of them, but we'll save that for another class. Let's go on. Now, the next time that we see the word Elijah mentioned is in verse 8 of chapter 2. It says, in 1866, the first congregation of spiritualists, disciples of this doctrine, was born. Under the light of my spirit and oriented by Elijah, those first children began to receive the inklings of a message which now, at its ending, 
you are receiving in abundance. This is talking about how the Third Testament came about. The Elijah spirit again paved the way for the Third Testament of the Bible. He was first contacted by the Elijah spirit in 1866. He was already grown. He was already an adult before the Elijah spirit ever came to dwell with him and he came to do it and he came to dwell with this Ro Rogers individual by way of spirit but Ro Rogers wasn't the only person that this happened to apparently and we'll find out probably in this study how this Elijah spirit came in contact with several individuals all over the world spreading this message these same revelations and he's also doing so today there are people who are still getting this word the third testament of the bible these new commands of revelations they are getting it by way of inspiration and that is because of this elijah spirit all right that was number six number seven says messages and signs all around the world that's another section in chapter two of this bible it says Elijah who would come first to prepare the pathway of the Lord manifested himself for the first time through a human speaker in 1866 and that's what we just talked about this Ro Rogers individual now I'm really only trying to talk about the verses that Elijah is talked about here but I do want to bring this part out down here um, this next part it says do you wish to dedicate a few moments to investigate the signs and events that took place in all its sequence and coincided with the period of that manifestation for the people who want proof it says right here again it will be the men of science who will study the stars those who in ancient times were called the wise men those who will testify that the heavens have given signs that are divine voices okay so you guys who on stellarium um this is calling you out this is who you're talking about you you guys who are good with all of that um star alignment information and such and it's telling you that you can use that information that you're getting from Stellarium to go in and prove that these events took place in 1866. That's what he's saying there. So if you know any of those guys who like to um, uh, use that star alignment data in their videos, there's a lot of them out there. I don't really do that kind of stuff. Um, challenge them. You know, see if they're willing to go in and use their talents and abilities for good and actually see if they can see what the stars were saying in 1866. I'm really interested to know myself and I'm sure there's a lot of people are out there. You know, the Bible is no joke. And when it says something happened in the stars in 1866, I best believe you can jump on there and actually see what it was. It says it is those individuals that will testify that the heavens have given signs that are divine voices. All right. Now, I haven't read through these all the way um, through. You guys know that I do a lot of impromptu classes um, and I am struggling with power issues here. You could probably hear a generator running in the background. That's because we're under a lot of um, shade here now and we don't have a lot of power and so I'm actually um, using a generator to um, produce this class um, and so I'm just trying to get through it as quickly as possible we plan on doing several more classes on Elijah coming up but this one I just want to do an exhaustive search on the word Elijah in the third testament of the Bible so you guys please bear with me but we're here still in chapter 2 verse 11 says Elijah who manifested himself to you prior to my manifestations through human spokesmen did not come only to this nation where you live he went from one place to another throughout the earth announcing the arrival of a new era and also informing humanity that the kingdom of heaven would soon descend upon mankind this is what I was talking about a few minutes ago it wasn't just Roe Rogers and it wasn't just the individuals that wrote this third testament of the Bible he went all over the world this Elijah spirit talked to a lot of people he, he actually um, came in contact spirit to spirit communication with these individuals all over the world say so he went from place to place throughout the earth 
so every place on the planet would have um, had people certain people who were prepared to to do such things actually um, felt the presence of the Elijah spirit and some people like we said are still doing this today and what did he do he came um, informing us of the arrival of a new era this is the Aquarian age it's actually started already and that's what you see with all of these wars and stuff and fighting and protests and stuff that's going on um, that's the part of the transition as humanity tries to change from the Piscean age to the Aquarian age and he was also informing humanity that the kingdom of heaven would soon descend upon mankind soon descend upon mankind and I said I didn't want to get too preachy in this class but I do want to point out how we're saying that the kingdom of heaven will descend is coming down here to earth guys it's coming down here this is what a lot of people refer to as the rapture people refer to it as the third temple of the Bible um, this is the great awakening that is about to take place in humanity there was a toss-up you know whether I would do this class on Elijah today or whether I was going to do a class on um, when these events would take place using uh, Daniel chapter 12 and 2nd Kings chapter 25 to show you uh, when these events when is the early dates for these events to take place I have done one video on it um, and I will do another video in the future on when I believe the scripture is showing us these events will take place uh, early date you know with early date on when they will take place I'll show you that if we have enough time I may go into it at the end of this video all right I'm putting a lot of these verses up on the screen guys um, if you want you can slow it down and you can read it or like I said you, you can get links to this third testament and you can actually go get it and read it for yourself you can jump on board that website over there um, jesuscomes.com and put in the word Elijah and you can do the same thing that I'm doing here alright number eight is um, the heading in chapter two Elijah as the forerunner of the Lord forerunner he's always the forerunner Uh, verse 26 says I sent Elijah to return in the third era as I as the master in that second era had announced saying I say unto you Elijah has come already and they knew him not okay this is always the case every time the Messiah comes every time we have the, the presence of the Elijah spirit now he was in John the Baptist back then there's nothing and no way we can tell if John the Baptist was the only individual that had this Elijah spirit but we do know now that there are several individuals who already have the Elijah spirit and if we continue on in this video we're going to find out that this Elijah spirit is actually going to dwell in a lot of us a lot of us are going to get this Elijah spirit too uh, again that's you know it's going to happen sometime around the rapture if not it is if 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 not to be the rapture event when this Elijah spirit comes and and starts to dwell with us I shall return to the world but truly I tell you before me shall be Elijah okay that's his job he comes to pave the way for the Messiah for the Father for the kingdom of, of heaven for the new era he's bringing in the new era this time verse 27 says and all the words of the master came to pass in the third era Elijah has come before me to awaken the spirits to make them foresee that the hour of the Holy Spirit shall open their doors to say to every spirit to open his eyes to prepare his garments to pass the threshold from the second era to the third era okay this is this is what Elijah is doing he's bringing in the kingdom of heaven 
this is why he's making contact with so many individuals out here is because you know it, it we're, we're at that time in our spiritual evolution where we're going into this third era in this third era we're going to become spiritualized individuals that we get that new covenant that is talked about where the laws will be written on our hearts and don't be confused when people try to say that the laws are written on our hearts now they're not these are the laws of Moses that will be written on our hearts and if they were already written on our hearts then we would not be debating on whether or not we should be keeping those laws or not we would understand those laws in eternally they will be generated from our conscience if we were under the new covenant already it goes on to say and so that manifestation of Elijah will be more tangible in this third era I made him speak through just a man Ro Roges now this may be a little bit confusing in light of some of the stuff that I've said already but understand this word right here where he says speak through I made him to speak through we're gonna see here in a, in a little while this little this Ro Roges individual sp spoke bluntly and said I am Elijah you don't hear many people doing that although they may be getting these divine inspirations they may be getting you know um, um, other insights and, and you know feeling a certain way spiritually not many of them are actually speaking as if they were Elijah Elijah is not speaking through them that's that's what I believe the difference is 28 says Elijah from the hereafter spiritually enlightened this man inspired him strengthened him and guided all of his steps from beginning to the end this is this road roses individual here not many of us can say this has happened to us the individuals who have made contact with the Elijah spirit I don't know if I have or not you know there is one event that I made a video about not too long ago why I described a supernatural spiritual event that happened to me but whether or not this was the Elijah spirit I don't know it only lasted for a few seconds but I'm gonna tell you it it did feel like a spiritual enlightenment so the difference between me and this Ro Roses individual is that this enlightenment lasted for more than 30 or 40 seconds it says he it says he inspired him, strengthened him, and guided all of his steps from beginning to end. So I believe whereas all of us may get, all of us may have had a taste of this Elijah spirit. And I believe we all one day will have permanent residence with this Elijah spirit. Just like this Ro Roger's individual did back there in the day, 1866. All right, we're still in chapter two, and we're looking at um, the 16th time that the word Elijah is mentioned. But it's more talking about the Ro Roger's individual. It says he was persecuted, as was Elijah the prophet. And he had to seek out the mountain peaks to pray for and watch over his people. That's talking about that Ro Rogers individual. Number 17, I'm going to start right here where it says, His spirit knew how to free himself from this world and his flesh to penetrate the spiritual valley and humbly arrive at the gates of the mysteries of the Lord. And by this elevation, the spirit of Elijah manifested himself to the first witnesses before the coming of the ray of the master. And so this Elijah spirit came before the third testament of the Bible. That's what it's talking about there when it says the ray of the master. This ray is a ray of an enlightenment that came down on several individuals who went on to give teachings that were compiled into this third testament of the Bible. And all of this is described in the text of this book. You can read all of this. I'm not making anything up. This book is very detailed. It answers any question you can come up with. 
um, there's several people who have, you know, come over to our channel and tried to help us out uh, with the Third Testament of the Bible, um, and we've been able to answer every question that they've come up with. You know, some of it may take some digging to find the answer, but the answers are all, all here. There's no contradictions in the scripture between the Old Testament and the New Testament. It doesn't take anything away from the Old Testament and it doesn't take anything away from the New Testament. However, it does add a lot of understanding, a lot of spirituality, a lot of revelations. This is a very powerful book. I'm talking about the Third Testament of the Bible. All right, looking here. In verse 33 of chapter 2, it says, Ro Rogers assembled a group of men and women of faith and goodwill. And there, in the midst of his first gatherings, Elijah manifested himself through the faculty of the envoy, saying, I am Elijah the prophet. The same of the transfiguration of Mount Tabor. Now, this is what it was saying earlier, how Elijah actually talked through this Roe Rogers individual. This was Roe Rogers' part in the Third Testament of the Bible. Elijah actually talked through him. It says, I am Elijah. And he went on to be like a coach, uh, for the lack of a better word, he to these um other individuals who went on to actually write the lessons that are included in the Third Testament. I say again that Ro Rogers didn't actually write the Third Testament, but he started this group. See where it says Ro Rogers assembled a group of men and women of faith and goodwill. He kind of, you know, he had this Elijah spirit and as the people were listening to him in this community they you know when they started to hear these truths coming out of the mouth of this road Rogers individual they started to put a lot of faith in what he was saying and they started to adhere to his teachings and what he was saying as far as preparing preparing them in the spirit and so they went on to actually um, get this divine rays these rays of inspiration to where they was actually able to give the teachings to write the third testament of the bible they actually wrote a book called the great book which is a very huge 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 book that took them several years to write even decades to write um probably from about 18 84 up to about 1950 they was getting these teachings and the thing about these teachings a lot of them repeated themselves and so they ended up taking them and compiling them into this book what you call the third testament of the bible but you can find several um uh lessons from that book over there that's what these numbers refer to um this part that is that's talked about up here came out of lesson 345 and um, verses 57 through 58 but to let you know how big this book is um, you know how much I like to read the Word of God I've only read about three or four of these lessons there they are huge and you see there's way more than there's more than 345 of these lessons in this great book Verse 34 says, On a day when the humble dwelling of Ro Rogers was full of faithful followers who believed the word of that man, Elijah descended to illuminate the mind of his speaker. Transcribers of the original notes omitted. Let me come over here. Like I said, this is a word document and I'm not really sure what's going on over here. So let me let me jump over here and see how this is actually written over here okay so we're looking over here and sorry to have to brighten up your screen like this um but you can see right there that was actually a footnote down in there 
you got the words right here um, illuminated the mi mind illuminated the mind of the speaker and then it goes on to these footnotes down here and then it was supposed to say and inspired by me okay I'm gonna leave it like that um have to figure out some way to straighten it out later on like I said this is a word document and at one point I was thinking of rewriting this book <laughs> and straightening out some of the errors in it and I may still do that it's so hard to get a um, paperback or a hardback copy of this book and so we may end up having to print it off ourselves. and if we do you know we might as well have some of this stuff straightened out all right so look at what it says right here it says that Elijah descended to illuminate the mind of his speaker who was Ro Rogers and inspired by me have to jump down here then it says that he anointed seven of these believers to whom he gave the representation or symbolism of the seven seals. All right. So then you're going to get on into this Damiano Aviedo individual. Now, when you start actually talking about who wrote the role, who wrote the third testament of the Bible, you're really going to have to get into this lady right here it was several individuals but she was a big deal but anyway we're talking about Elijah all right still in chapter 2 uh, verse 38 says Elijah like Jesus and Moses came to illuminate the eyes of your spirit so that you would behold the father okay this is what they mean when they say the third Elijah this Elijah figure is extremely important. Now you look right here it says Moses taught you to love your fellow man as thyself. Jesus said to you love one another. Elijah ordered you to have charity and more charity towards your brethren. Then he added and you will behold my father in all of his splendor. Now like I said, I don't want to get real preachy in here, but, you know, pay attention to what it's saying right here. Moses taught us to love our fellow man. Before Moses came, there was a lot of killing going on in the world, even after Moses, because once we got that document, the Old Testament or the Torah, um, we were taught to stop killing people. Then when the Messiah came, we were told to start loving one another, to have love for our brother. So whereas Moses gave us the law, the Messiah gave us love. And then you have this Elijah spirit that's coming telling us to have charity for one another. And charity means actually doing something. I can love you without actually doing anything for you, but to have charity means I actually have to do something. I have to help you out in some way, a demonstration of that love. But if we can put those three things together, it says, and you will behold my father in all of his splendor. Okay, so that's really important. But it ain't that kind of class, so we ain't going to go into that in too great a detail. 39 says when the darkness that has covered humanity disappears and light is manifested in the spirits you will feel the presence of a new era for Elijah has returned among men now it is this Elijah figure this Elijah spirit that's going to fight this darkness all of this stuff that you see going on in humanity right now you flip on the news it seems like 2020 is off the chain and it seems to be you know um, accelerating at a high pace this is darkness trying to take over the world trying to extinguish our flame and if it wasn't for this Elijah figure we're gonna find out it would do just that humanity will be lost but this Elijah's figure this, this spirit of Elijah is going to come and dwell with certain individuals and actually cause them to be able to help the rest of us to survive this tribulation. And this is what our channel is about, guys. If you, you know, 
want to know how it is that we are to survive the tribulation go ahead and subscribe to our channel because you know that's the kind of stuff we put out this is really a lukewarm class about Elijah but really we're, we're really strong on you know obedience to the scripture and what it's going to take to actually survive this tribulation so if 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 you're into that kind of thing and I know not everybody is if you're into that kind of thing um, go ahead and consider subscribing to our channel Let me go ahead and read verse 40 he says but since they have not known how to see him it has been necessary that he manifest his spirit through a human spokesman and that he appears before those who are unable to perceive him spiritually as in the same vision in which Elijah saw Elijah riding a carriage of fire over the clouds and this is going back to um, the first time that Elijah is mentioned in the Bible over there in one of the books of Kings when he was um, going up against Jezebel and King Ahab and those guys you're probably already familiar with that story if you're familiar with the King James Version or if you're familiar with the Old Testament of the Bible verse 41 says Elijah has come as a forerunner in this time to prepare mankind for my arrival he has come as a prophet to announce the new era to you with its battles its trials and also with the wisdom of his revelations see this is what we see going on now is the battles and the trials and they're going to get worse guys we're only in the early parts of it you know a lot of people believe that the tribulation hasn't even started yet you know this is what we're seeing now is just the beginning of sorrows the beginning of sorrows is where we're at now you know once we get in this tribulation it's going to take this Elijah spirit to get us out of it he's a very important dude and he's coming with a lot of wisdom and a lot of revelations and again you know if you guys can pause this you know or slow it down or something to where you can actually you know read these texts for yourself or again go jump over there and get the third testament for yourself you know there's a lot of people that's trying to keep you from reading this bible but not here at Hermes Academy we're we're trying to do everything we can to let you know about it and trying to help you get it all right here in uh, 42 of chapter 2 it says Elijah a spirit of great power who has not been recognized by humanity has always been my forerunner okay humanity hasn't really recognized Elijah even though you hear about him over in the last chapter of the Old Testament the book of Malachi chapter 4 the last three verses talks about Elijah and how he was promised to come in this time to help us out humanity doesn't really know about him um, Verse 43 says, if you prepare yourselves and study my teaching in order to come to know my will, Elijah will come as your support and friend. Now, I always said that if it's the biggest word in the Bible, he says, if you prepare yourselves and study my teaching in order to come to know my will, Elijah will come as your support and friend. So if you don't, he won't. And this is what the same thing is saying over there in Malachi chapter 4 except instead of saying um, study my teachings is talking about the law of Moses which is the same thing that's how Elijah is going to come as to be our supporting friend is we have to embrace the law 44 says Elijah is a divine ray who illuminates and guides all beings and leads them to me Okay, again, that's exactly what Malachi chapter 4 says is that Elijah is going to bring us to him. It says, Love and honor him as a forerunner and as your mediator. So, Elijah is going to be our go between, between us and the Messiah, us and the Father. 45 says, Elijah the prophet, the forerunner, the envoy of the third era, intercedes for his flock prays for those who do not know to pray and conceals with his mantle the blemish of the sinner waiting for his reju regeneration 
This is how important this guy is. This is what he's doing. This is what he's going to do. This is Elijah. The Elijah spirit. You ever see that movie, The Book of Elijah? Or The Book of Eli? That's who he's talking about. And the thing about that book, now that I bring it up, the book that he's carrying is the Third Testament of the Bible. If you watch the very end of the movie when Eli is transcribing uh, the, the Word of God and they put the book on the shelf, they actually put what he's transcribed beside the Torah and beside the New Testament and pretty much beside all the whole Bible. It's like, well, why was he giving this information if they already have it? The Torah is sitting there. Why would he be transcribing the book of Genesis? No, it's actually the third testament of the Bible that he was carrying. At some point, this book is going to become um, almost extinct because, you know, it's hard to find now. And then as we get into this tribulation, nobody's really going to know that it exists. And, you know, and that's why in that movie they were that that. And that villain was trying to find that book so badly why he needed it so much because like I said this is a very very powerful book and you know I know that's just a movie but if that villain had have actually found that book yeah he'd have been able to take over the world you, you could take over the world with this book after the tribulation right now people are not paying any attention to it because you know we don't really need to you know everything's going the way we want we got you know everything we need because of the B systems out there we got food we got clothing we got shelter electricity protection you know we just about get everything we need but after we have experienced the global earthquake and you know after the world has been humbled and we find ourselves sick and hungry and you know homeless and tired then we're going to be looking from some help from the word and any individual that knows this word right here is going to be extremely powerful. This third testament of the Bible is something else. One of my commenters, one of my commenters said, "It's the bomb. The third testament of the Bible is the bomb, and it definitely is the bomb." You look right here. It says Elijah prepares his multitudes, his legions, to combat the darkness created by ignorance, sin, fanaticism, and materialism of mankind. So this Elijah spirit, this is the spirit of a man, but he comes to prepare multitudes, many, many people, his legions. That's a lot of people. Not just one person. It's not going to be one individual walking around. This is a lot of people. And like we said up there in a few verses ago, all we have to do is embrace the teachings and embrace the will of the Father. And we can be of these multitudes, these legions, to go on to combat the darkness created by ignorance. Now, we're going to go on in this study, but it seems to be that there's going to be a close relationship between this Elijah spirit and the 144,000 that we hear about. A very close relationship between those. It may be the Elijah spirit that empowers the 144,000 because remember that is their main job to combat the darkness. To save humanity from total destruction. Verse 46 says, remember that Elijah, the promised one of this time, is preparing everything to rescue the nations of the earth, enslaved by materialism from the rule of Pharaoh. And this is just like Moses did back there in the day. Elijah is the present day Moses. And you got to remember that we're living in modern day Egypt. That's why all of those Egyptian symbols are all over our money and all over our capitals and the buildings and everywhere else. This is the modern day Egypt. And as those plagues start to fall on Egypt, it is this Elijah spirit, just like Moses, that's going to lead us out of it. Verse 47 says, I tell you, brethren, that Elijah has already manifested himself through a human spokesman. That is his presence. 
that his presence has been in spirit and that he shall continue to illuminate the way to all the people who shall come in the future. So there's a lot of people with this Elijah spirit right now. Now, of course, there's a lot of people who think they're crazy, too. You know. Now, I'm not one of them, but I wouldn't dare say they were crazy at all. <clears throat> this, this, Elijah, this is the promise of the Elijah spirit. So when you hear somebody talking in this manner, you know, we may, we may need to do more listening than we do talking, you know, because we don't know. They, they, they could very well be, you know, and have the Elijah spirit. This 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 is the promise of the Bible. This is what's told is coming. And so when we see somebody with it, you know <clears throat> very well could be. I know I'm not an expert by any means. Verse forty verse forty eight says, Your shepherd has his mission to restore all the creatures to their true faith, whether it be spiritual, moral, or material order. For which I tell you how how fortunate shall be the nations that receive the call of the Lord through Elijah. These, these individuals with the Elijah spirit are very fortunate individuals. You know, and that could be what's going on that so many people, you know, refer to them as demonic spirits or you know they talk real negative about these individuals is because there's probably a lot of jealousy going on there these individuals are very fortunate to have this Elijah spirit thus they shall be united by the law of justice and love which shall bring them peace as the fruit of their understanding and brotherhood Notice that part. It says united by the law. Again, we teach that on our channel. All right, we're at the end of chapter two. The last verse says Elijah is the ray of God whose light comes to dissipate the darkness and liberate you from the slavery of this time, which is sin. And who will guide your spirit through the desert until you arrive at the promised land in the bosom of God. So see right here, Elijah is the ray of God, ray of God. This is a divine ray. This is hmm, hard to describe, but I think you know what he's talking about. Spiritual enlightenment. Whose light comes to dissipate the darkness. Liberate you from the slavery of this time. Liberate, liberate you from the slavery of this time. And the slavery of this time is sin. And what is sin? Sin is the transgression of the law. You know. Transgression of the law. And what is the law? The Torah. And what is Torah? Torah means instructions. The instructions given to us by Moses to help us survive the tribulation. And by breaking those instructions, we find ourselves in slavery. And that's why a lot of people don't want you to know about the word because of just this. If you keep the law, they can't keep you in slavery, which is a threat to our economic systems of the world this is why they want to hide books from you in the first place if they can keep you in a state of sin they can keep you as slaves and we are all slaves don't don't get it mixed up you know the father never intended for us to go out and work for another man at all we were supposed to serve him but because of sin the transgression of the law now we need the beast systems for our food, clothing, and shelter. We are totally dependent on the beasts for our livelihood. And thereby we are enslaved. We are slaves to that beast. Now we've already covered 34 hits out of the Third Testament. 
34 out of 60 and we're all the way up here to 35 which is in chapter 8 of the third testament of the bible and it's really getting important in what it's talking about here because it's referring to the rapture it's referring to the new covenant it's referring to the new millennium age that we're going into as we're looking at this part here this lesson here out of chapter 8 you see up here where it says the times when you needed a spiritual guide in this world have passed this is talking about the new covenant here it says from this time forward all who enter into this path will have no other road but that of my law and no other guide than their conscience. This is the new covenant. This is what we're expecting. This is the rapture, guys. This is where we're going, where we're going to have the laws written on our heart. This is what it means to have the laws written on our heart is that our only guide will be our conscience. There are so many people that's about to go away off this planet, guys, that, you know, we really won't have a lot of people to depend on. The only thing we're going to have to depend on for our survival is our conscious and you know that conscious will then have the laws written on it he says this does not mean that there will cease to be men and women of great light and strength verse 95 says if it were not so I would have sent to earth spirits like Moses and Elijah to trace the road for you and remind you of the law on every step talking about Elijah so this is telling us how it's going to be in the millennial age. There's still going to be individuals who will give aid through their example and with their inspiration of the multitudes. If this were not the case, then we would have to have Elijah spirits from now on. They would have to keep coming. But no, the Elijah Spirit is going to help us get through the tribulation and pretty much turn us over to the conscious as humanity goes forward from then on. Now, the next time we see the word Elijah, we're starting in chapter 9, which is storage, stories and percentages of the people of Israel. And he had this section called the struggle of Elijah for the true God. Verse 40 says, in the first era, Elijah came to earth and found that humanity was practicing idolatry and did not believe in God. So this is talking about the first time that we hear about the Elijah spirit way back over in the books of Kings when he was going up against King Ahab and Jezebel and the world was all into idolatry. It says how we were governed by kings and priests who both had departed from the obedience of the divine laws by then. So the kings were off track and the priests were off track all into idolatry. Guiding their people along paths of confusion and falsehood. And you know this is going on now guys. You know, they've gotten away from the divine laws. You know, we teach in our churches that we're not supposed to be obedient to the law. There's some cheats. There's some churches that go as far as to say if you are obedient to the laws, then you are turning your back on Jesus. You have no faith in Jesus because you are obedient to the laws of the Bible. That's confusion and falsehood. It says Elijah appeared and in that time and spoke to them with words of justice telling mankind open your eyes and see that you have disrespected the law of the Lord and this is what Elijah is going to do now too. tell us how we have disrespected the law of the Lord 42 says Elijah heard my voice which said to him depart from the wicked people of that nation Tell them that rain will not fall for a long time until you order it so in my name. And Elijah said, it will not rain until my Lord appoints the hour and my voice orders it. This is the story that we read about over there in Kings. Jezebel had killed all of the prophets with the exception of Elijah. And she had 
400 prophets who served Baal. We have many prophets out here who serve Baal today. You just have to know who Baal is. Then you'll understand what that means by serving Baal. Verse 45 says, Elijah had departed by divine mandate. He prayed and awaited the will of the Lord. This is talking about how after he had ceased the rain, he went up on a mountain and stayed there until he heard from the Lord. Verse 46 says, years went by and one day when Elijah elevated his spirit to the father, he heard his voice saying, seek out the king. And when I give you the sign, wait, the waters once again will fall over the land. Filled with obedience, Elijah humbly went before the king. And I may cover this whole chapter in another class so I can give more detail on the Elijah of old. Because, you know, that's what the Third Testament does is it help clears up a lot of the misunderstandings that help add revelations and inspirations to the stories of that we were given in the old time. And so it fills in the blanks of what we've gotten back over in the Old Testament. But in this one, I just want to hit the highlighted point. I just want to hit the highlighted words. Verse 48 says, Faced with this proof, the people awakened and remembered their father who called and warned them through Elijah. And so, you know, we can look at that old story over there and, and get an idea of how it's going to be when we come in contact with the Elijah spirit in the future. Now we're all the way up here in chapter 10. The next time we see the word Elijah, when the time came, is the title of chapter 10. Elijah appears before men in each era and in each divine revelation. It goes on to talk about how Elijah had incarnated in John the Baptist. But it's talking more about the Messiah there in that section. The 46th time that we see the word Elijah is in the transfiguration of Jesus. Where it talks about how Moses was on his right and Elijah on his left. But you see right here in 76 that Moses and Elijah had royal purple mantle. They had a royal purple mantle upon them. And they was wanting to put this same purple mantle upon the Messiah. Before but before they did, they got a voice from the heaven. Now, I feel like this is a little bit of lull in this class as we're talking about past tense stuff. I'm really more interested in the futuristic stuff. And I think you guys will be, too, because you can hear about these stories over there in um, the New Testament. But that's what this whole chapter is about. Chapter nine and chapter ten and maybe even chapter 11 is about this, the occurrences that happened in the past. And then we're going to get into more futuristic events here in a second. So let's just push through these. It says, then they asked the Lord, why do the scribes say that it is necessary for Elijah to come first? And Jesus answered, truly, Elijah shall come first and restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah has already come and they knew him not. This is talking about John the Baptist. All right, next we're going to jump all the way down to chapter 24, which is the spiritual and material creation. And the section called the role of great spirits in the creative work. Verse 9 says, Elijah is the great spirit that is at the right hand of God. And who in his humility calls himself the servant of God. So this shows just how important Elijah is. He's on the right hand of God. Somebody that's paying attention would ask the question, well, if he's on the right hand of God, where is the Messiah? It says, and through whose conduit and through the conduits of other great spirits, I move the spiritual universe and carry out great and elevated designs. 
Yes, my disciples and my servants, I have a multitude of great spirits in that direct creation. And see, we have to understand and see, I believe the main message here is reminding us that our father doesn't play every role. He has a lot of great spirits that's out here helping us, including the archangels. You know, there's a lot of spiritual individuals involved in his work, this creative work, creation of humanity. Verse 43 says, Elijah is the greatest of the prophets that have come to the earth. And in spite of the great work that he did and the great trials that he experienced, he had to return to the world in another time, in another material form, and with another name. This is down here in chapter 30, which is the, the development of the spirit, the reincarnation. Reincarnation. Now, there's a lot of people that, you know, get wrapped around the axle when you start talking about reincarnation. And it is no accident because of that. And that is no accident because our scripture was actually changed by some of those Catholic forefathers went in and literally removed the word reincarnation from the Bibles and replaced it with the word resurrection. And so whereas now everybody is expecting their bodies to come up out of the ground in some type of zombie apocalypse, the scripture was actually talking about res re the scripture was actually saying reincarnation, meaning that our spirits will be reborn in other individuals and and that's what it's talking about here and it's talking about Elijah Elijah even though he was the greatest of the spirits he still had to be reincarnated to finish his work now down here in chapter 38 which is the three which is the three divine revelations and the seven seals this scripture actually tells us of the seven seals and what they are We've done classes on these recently on the seven seals. If you want to know which seal we're in, I believe it's actually going to tell us here, though, talking about Elijah. This section is the three testaments of God. It go, it gives a lot of detail on why we have a third testament in the first place. It says Moses, Jesus and Elijah. There is the road the Lord has marked to help men elevate themselves to the kingdom of peace, light and perfection. That shows the importance of Elijah. That's why they call him the third Elijah. You could call him the third Jesus. You could call him the third Moses. It says this is the road that has been marked to help men elevate themselves to the kingdom of peace. Moses gave us the law. Jesus gave us love. Elijah is the one that's going to give us spirit. Down here it says, analyze the teaching of Jesus through whom the divine word spoke and seek the spiritual essence of my new revelation whose era is represented by Elijah. Elijah is a big deal, guys. He's important to our spiritual walk. He's important to our salvation if we understand what the word saved means. All right, getting back into some more exciting stuff right here in chapter 38. Verse 49 said the sixth seal says the sixth stage is represented by Elijah. He is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. All right. So this is letting us know that we are in the sixth seal. Like I said, this chapter of the book explains the seals. What they are, when they occurred, how they occurred. It clears up a lot of confusion. You know. The only people that would actually want to reject this idea of this lesson of these six seals who, you know, are people who have committed to their own understanding of the six seals. And they don't really want to get rid of that. They don't want to change. They don't want to embrace the truth. And, you know, as ministers, we have to always be willing to do this because, you know, the the, the father doesn't give everybody all of the information at one time. He he kind of. 
gives it to us over time. We get a little bit here and then we come back later and we learn a little bit more and we come back later and we learn a little bit more. We always have to be willing to embrace the truth and put away um, what we thought we knew in the past. That's why you'll find my class a little bit more fluid than others is because I'll change on a dime when I see scripture that corrects a misunderstanding that I had. I'll immediately forget that misunderstanding and I'll start speaking the truth as if I've been talking that way the whole time. I, I ain't married to no idea. You know, if I don't see it written in black and white, then, you know, it's just an idea. But once I see it written in black and white, I'm going to go with what the scripture says. No matter what I understood before then. And so now we understand what the six seals are. It says, this is the stage in which you are living. That is of Elijah. It is his light that illuminates you. He represents the teachings that were hidden, but that are being revealed to mankind in this era. And see, this is what Daniel was referred to when he said that knowledge will increase. And this is why we can't go by a lot of the doctrines that we've learned in the past because those people just didn't know. The Bible always said that knowledge will increase in this time, in the tribulation time. In the end times, knowledge will increase. And so you got to be really expecting people of this time to be coming up with a lot more truths that were veiled to those individual people even a hundred years ago. People like Clarence Larkin didn't really need information like we do today. Clarence Larkin is dead and gone and he doesn't have to live through the tribulation. No, it is this generation. It is us who has a great need for this information and it is us that Elijah is bestowing this illumination onto. Should be clear, real easy to understand that. Alright, here in chapter 54 which is struggles between doctrines, religion, and churches. It's, I'm, like I said, this book is really, really deep, guys. You know, and, you know, hear me saying a lot of stuff, but, you know, much of what you hear me say that you aren't used to hearing is because, you know, I'm getting a lot of information from this book. It goes into great detail on stuff like doctrines, religions, and churches, you know. But this part of the verse says, and when the struggle is at its height and the poor are humiliated and their testimony is denied by the arrogant, then shall the moment, then shall be the moment when Elijah calls the wise, the lords and the princes and puts them to a test. This is a huge verse right here, guys. A lot going on in this verse, talking about the timing of the Elijah spirit it says when the struggle is at its height and the poor are humiliated and that's the people who are out here trying to teach truth are humiliated the people who want to teach lies they're exalted right now guys they got big churches big mega churches you know they're exalted big time but watch what happens. It says once the once the the poor are humiliated and their testimonies denied, these people who are trying to tell the truth, once their testimonies are denied by the arrogant, those arrogant individuals out there having their way, he says that shall be the moment when Elijah calls the wise. And who are the wise? The ones who keep the law. That's when he calls the wise. You can find out that over in uh, Daniel when he's when Daniel says uh, talks about the wicked versus the wise we find out the wicked are the transgressors of the law and so the wise will be the opposite of the transgressors of the law those who keep the law that's when he's going to call the what call the that's when he's going that's when he's going to call the wise the lords and the princesses and do what and put them to a test Right. So all these people, all of these individuals, it ain't just it ain't just the arrogant. 
and the hu it's everybody that's going to be put to this test. The only deal is is that the wise ones are going to prevail. The wise ones are going to pass this test. Everybody's going to get tested. Everybody, the wise, the princesses, the lords, the arrogant, the humiliated, the poor. Everybody's going to get tested by this Elijah spirit. For watch 45, it says, Woe to the false and hypocrites in that hour, for perfect justice shall descend to them. It shall be the hour of justice. But from it, many spirits will ascend to true life. And many hearts faithful arise and many eyes will be opened to the light. This is the rapture that he's talking about right here. That's the rapture that he's talking about. Elijah. Elijah is the head of the rapture. Elijah is one that's going to be doing the rapturing. And for the individuals that don't like that word, you know, you can look up. There's actually three different definitions of the word rapture. One, the latest addition to the word rapture includes a supernatural removal from the planet. But the other two definitions of the word is a state or experience of being carried away by overwhelming emotion. But I think the one that fits the most of what actually is going to happen to us is a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things. Great awakening. We're going to be awoken. Our spiritual man is going to be awoken. We're going to be enlightened by this Elijah spirit. You know, that's what we're learning here in this in this chapter. This is a very, very, very big deal, guys. We're down here in chapter 58, which is the kingdom of the the kingdom of the peace of Christ and the culmination of creation. Verse 28 says, when the world reaches its new liberation and guided by the light of Elijah comes into the good and just life, you will have here on the earth a reflection of the spiritual life that awaits you beyond this life in which you will enjoy eternally the peace and the light of your father. So we're going to get an example of what life is going to be like with our father here. And that's what it means by great awakening. Our spirits are going to evolve. It's going to change us. That's what it means by we're going to change in a moment. We're actually going to be changed individuals. And, you know, we give classes on, you know, the rapture. We give classes on the great awakening, the third temple, the hour of the conscious. You know, all of this kind of goes hand in hand. And what it's going to be like, you know. Um, and it's a really big deal. You know, we're going to be in contact with the spirit world, um, including people that are passed on. We're going to be able to use telepathy. We're going to be able to control the weather. I mean, I can go on and on. Um, like I said, we do give classes on this kind of stuff, you know, based on the scripture. If you like the scriptural content where we're pulling stuff out of the Bible, we don't really make anything up here. We go by what the scripture says. And so if you want to get this kind of content, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We, we're putting classes out just about every day these days. And so, you know, you want to get those classes when they come out or you know, you, you may go days without seeing our classes and you'll miss some. They'll pile up on you. You won't be able to go back and look at all of them. And we promise to do more classes on this Elijah spirit here in the future. As you see, it's extremely important. All right. Now, here is the last two times that the word uh, Elijah is mentioned in the Third Testament of the Bible. And this is coming from chapter 65 which are parables um just like we got parables in the new testament we get parables in the third testament and there's some really good stories in there to help us to get an understanding some really deep stuff you know the lord is he's excellent with his parables that reminds me of the shepherd of hermas guys um just to mention that you know guys go look up the book called the shepherd of hermas on youtube it's about four hour audio book that you can listen to listen to that book Listen, listen, listen to that book. You know, we're, we're all about holiness and righteousness over here. We're always trying to teach you guys. And I know I didn't 
I tried not to go into, you know, I tried not to get real preachy in this class. However, you know, I did do it a little bit. But go over and check out that book called The Shepherd of Hermas, you know, so you can get some really good information by way of parables. In this one, there's one parable in here in the Third Testament of the Bible. It's called Crossing the Desert City. And it's all about Elijah. It's all about these two individuals, this one old man and this one young man who are crossing a desert. You have this old man who is the guide that is leading this young man across the desert. And when they come to a oasis, the young man wants to stay at the oasis while the old man wants to keep on going to the great city that they, they were both intending to go to at one point. But he the old man ends up leaving the young man behind because he wants to stay there the young man makes himself a king because he's selling water to people in the desert well the old man actually reaches the great kingdom the great city and when he gets there the lord of the great city makes him a guide and sends him back to get other people to help the other people to get through the desert it's a very good parable no i'm messing it up here but right here in verse 50, he says that I am the Lord of the great city. Talking about the father is the Lord of the great city. And Elijah is the old one of my parable. He is the voice of one crying in the wilderness. 51 says, follow Elijah, O my beloved people, and everything will change in your life. And will be transformed in your worship and ideas. So that's important, guys. We need to follow this Elijah. So to wrap this up, we've learned how it is that we can embrace this Elijah figure. We've gotten some information on when we are expecting him to show up. And we definitely got information on how he's going to show up and where and who. Um, we are going to give more classes on this Elijah spirit individual. Um, we're going to go into the apocalypse of Elijah. That's another book you guys could check out. Um, we did a, a reading of the apocalypse of Elijah. You can check out. It's the most popular video on our channel still um, called the apocalypse of Elijah. And we're going to jump in some other books and look at the apocalypse of Elijah here in the future. All right, guys, I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. Please leave a, leave a comment if you haven't done so already. Hit that subscribe button so you can get future classes when they come out. And pray for us. Shalom.